congenital or pediatric cataract is quite complex and seeks to regain full and normal vision for the child. Most pediatric cataracts are idiopathic in origin but may be due to hereditary causes, intrauterine infections, metabolic disorders, trauma or due to various iatrogenic causes. The preoperative evaluation helps to estimate the visual acuity, horizontal corneal diameter, type of cataract and intraocular pressure. One must look for nystagmus and document posterior segment pathologies if any, measure the axial length and calculate the intraocular power. Systemic workup is not required for unilateral cataracts but a complete Ocular examination is performed to look for persistent hypoplastic primary vitreous, posterior lenticonus, anterior segment dysgenesis. An extensive systemic workup is done for bilateral cataracts with no family history or recognizable syndromes. The tests performed to look for etiology are fasting blood sugar, plasma calcium and phosphorus, tests for reducing substances and amino acids in urine, serum levels of RBC transferase and galactokinase, and torch titers. Cataract surgery is performed for a visually significant cataract that is more than 3 mm in diameter. For bilateral cataracts, the cataract surgery is performed before the child completes 14 weeks of age. For unilateral cataract, the cataract surgery is performed before the child is 6 weeks of age. To take the necessary pre-operative measures, ensure you have a pediatric anesthetist in your team. Position the child with the head slightly higher to reduce positive pressure. Reduce the intraocular pressure by hyperventilation and use a pediatric speculum to avoid pressure on the globe. The superior incision is safer as it is protected by the eyelid. A clear corneal incision is preferred for implanting a foldable intraocular lens. A scleral tunnel incision is made to facilitate the implantation of a non-foldable lens. A continuous circular central capsulorexis helps to reduce intraoperative complications and improves long-term stable centration of the intraocular lens. Tripen blue staining helps to delineate the capsule well and alters its rheological properties. Use of a high viscosity viscoelastic substance helps to maintain a deep chamber, keep the capsule flat on the lens surface and prevents radialization. The rexus forceps provides good control of rexus centration, size and regularity. The lens capsule in children is elastic and prone to extend to the periphery. Frequently re-grasping the capsule prevents peripheral extension. The vitrector rexus technique also can help to manage the careful clearing of the lens capsule. In pediatric subjects, a multi-quadrant cortical cleaving hydrodissection can be used to separate the adherent epithelial and cortical layers from the capsule, facilitating cortex removal. Apart from using the FACO handpiece, albeit without ultrasound energy and automated irrigation aspiration for cortex and nucleus removal. A single port aspiration cannula with anterior chamber maintainer often comes in handy for safe removal of peripheral cortex. Complete removal of the cortex helps to reduce postoperative inflammation and posterior capsule opacification. The posterior capsule is managed by adequate manual posterior continuous curvilinear capsulorexis. It is recommended that primary posterior capsulotomy with anterior vitrectomy 
be performed for children under 6 to 7 years of age primary posterior capsulotomy without anterior vitrectomy be performed for children above 7 years of age and the posterior capsule be left intact in children above 9 to 10 years of age the size of the primary posterior capsulotomy must be 1 mm less than the size of the optic of the intraocular lens the posterior capsule may also be managed by vitrectorexis the most preferred intraocular lenses are hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lenses the safety and efficacy of primary intraocular lens implantation has been well established in children above 1 year of age however it is controversial in children under a year of age the absolute contraindications for the use of the intraocular lens are microcornea or cornea less than 10 mm and microphthalmos in infants all incisions are sutured to prevent leakage due to low scleral rigidity and also because children are more likely to injure themselves There are higher rates of post-operative complications like glaucoma or re-operations such as membranectomies among infants. Procedures like sinuculosis, pupilloplasty and peripheral iridectomy may also be required in special situations. Contact lenses may be fitted for aphasic children. and changed during the child's growing years to match the refraction of the eye for secondary intraocular lens implantation in aphasic children the child has to be at least 4 years of age a sulcus fixated intraocular lens is used in most cases however in the bag intraocular lens implantation is the technique of choice post operative education of the parents regarding the warning signs and the method of instilling eye medications is of paramount importance examination under anesthesia once every 3 to 4 months in the early post operative period for refraction intraocular pressure measurements and fundus evaluation is essential Periodic change of glasses and appropriate amblyopia therapy when required can lead to successful outcomes. Remember, surgery is just the beginning of the child's visual rehabilitation journey. How well the child will be able to see depends on the age of onset of cataract in the child. The type of cataract, laterality, type of optical rehabilitation and furthermore on amblyopia therapy and appropriate management of post operative complications